Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today we're tackling a question that many developers encounter when working with Angular and Spring Boot. Our viewer asks, how do I create an Angular 4 client for a Java Project Reactor Reactive Flux API? They have a Spring Boot application with both Mono and Flux APIs. But while the Mono API works perfectly in Angular, the Flux API doesn't seem to trigger any events. Let's dive into this challenge and explore how to get Angular 4 to work seamlessly with the Flux API. Welcome back to another technical video. Today I'll be going through your questions, answering them and hopefully finding that solution that you're looking for. Guys, remember to say just a little bit crazy just like me and hopefully get to that resolution you need. Now, let's get started. To create an Angular 4 client for a Spring Boot 2 Reactor Flux API, we first need to understand the difference between Mono and Flux. Mono represents a single value, while Flux can emit multiple values over time. In our Spring Boot application, we have defined two endpoints, one for Mono and another for Flux. The Mono API works fine with Angular, but the Flux API does not trigger the event handler. Let's take a look at the Flux API implementation. The Flux API uses server sent events, which means it streams data continuously. To handle this in Angular, we need to use the HD client module and subscribe to the event stream properly. In your Angular component, ensure you import the necessary modules and use the correct method to handle the streaming data. Here's an example of how to set it up. Finally, remember to handle the subscription properly to avoid memory leaks. Unsubscribe when the component is destroyed. This will ensure your application runs smoothly. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. In this example, we explore how to implement Server Sent Events, or SSE, in an Angular application. The key takeaway is the use of EndZone to ensure that updates trigger Angular's change detection. The main component initializes an event source and creates an observable for the events. When a message is received, it updates the observable within the Angular zone. The HTML template displays the event data. It shows the ID of the event when available or a loading message while waiting for data. Lastly, we define a simple myEvent class to structure the incoming data. This class uses object assigned to map JSON data to its properties. Additionally, we define stubs for event source and callback to ensure TypeScript recognizes them, allowing for smooth integration. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. The Flux-based controller produces server-sent events, but Angular's HTTP client doesn't support consuming SSE directly. Instead, you should use Event Source for this purpose. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer.
The issue might be with the URL for events, which should return JSON data. The code defines a Spring Boot application with a reactive service. The application includes two endpoints. One retrieves an event by ID, returning a single event as a mono. The second endpoint streams events every second using Flux, generating new events continuously. Finally, the application runs with the main method, starting the Spring Boot application. And that's it, guys. I hope this video has helped you get through to that resolution you're looking for. And if it did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, until next time, I hope you have a good day and see you then. Cheers.